Hello, and welcome back to myself playing the fun game that is Disco Elysium. We are still on pursuit for a murderer. But first, let's make a phone call back Inside, to the precinct. You see a set of steering wheels, a radio microphone. A... This is precinct 57. How may I assist you? Have you heard back from an ICP about the serial number? Yes. The armor was produced by. Fairweather in their facilities in Betancourt, sur la clé in 42. It was part of a special order for Cœur de Pharmacy, a security firm contracted to protect the interests of Iranian pharmaceutical companies in the Seminine conflict. So, it seems the armor went to Seminine. That's where the paper trail ends, though. Even the firm has proven difficult to track. Cœur de Pharmacy has been renamed several times over in the years since the armor was issued. Do you know what it's called now? The most recently registered firm that the ICP has been able to connect to the CDP is a military contractor called Trinel. And the one before it was down when. I think they might be the same contractor. A suit of armor like this would have been manufactured with a particular person's physique mm -hmm. in mind. You should ask for whom this suit was fitted. First, as the firm continued to work for the pharmaceutical company, of though all these names changes. Hard to say. The client list is rather diverse and incomplete. <laughs> the only concern seems to be that the mercenaries are always deployed in third and fourth world countries. A suit of armor like this would have been customized to fit the wearer. There must be a record of the person whom it was issued. Yes, but the ICP tends to be reluctant to share private sector records. I could try to talk them into it though. This is a fun challenge for her, an opportunity to contribute beyond doing her job by rote. She'll gladly put in the extra effort for Team RCM. Yes, thank you, officer. I really appreciate your efforts in this case. Glad to help. Call back tomorrow. Hopefully I'll have more for you then. Please contact me to Sylvie again. Just a second, I'll be there. Sylvie Malaika on the line for you, officer. Yes, hello? Hey, Sylvie, it's the police again. Oh, great. What else do you need, detective? Do you know how my paperwork ended up in a trash container behind the whirling? Well... You tried to jam it down the toilet, sir. Clogging it completely. After I had unclogged the toilet and retrieved the paperwork, I threw it out in the trash, thinking you didn't need it. I am sorry about that. Anything else, detective? Have you seen my gun? Please, no. Not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun, detective. I, I showed you my gun. When did it happen? You were trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating and... Actually, I don't want to know. I don't want to know what happened. Great. Anything else? I think I've got everything I need. Thanks. You hear the call breaking up on the other end of the radio. And then, the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? Uh, I'm done with the radio for now. End call. 57, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerk. Now, now, that's enough fun with the foldable... <laughs> Still here, stuck in this damn jam, my man. Let's have a little look around, see what we can. Something new or different. A 
The lorry's stuck in the traffic jam. This big, heavy, the windows are clear. They've been recently washed. You can see a lorry. Right to work! Right to work! Shame on you! No, no, nothing new here. Let's pick up some bits and pieces. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all eight. Hmm, I thought you had art supplies. Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. And a few more questions about the curse. Okay, but please, only a few questions. You wouldn't want to disturb the spirits. What about the wards and the back door? Are these Simonies as well? Yes, the Simonies are very crafty and their wards are extremely powerful. Lesser wards simply won't do here. The woman looks aloof, her features much softer. Occasionally she glances at her daughter's silhouette. Goodness, you were already doing good, browsing the shelves. Why do you stop? Don't you feel compelled? Go! Go! Get back there! The books await you! So, so what type of books do you have? Everything is on the shelves. Take a look yourself. The okay. shelves compel you, don't they? Okay, I'll take another look then. She smiles and nods, seemingly relieved. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the... Oh yes, certainly. Another good sale. <laughs> no same per person would ever put their head in such a machine. Looks like a good... Uh, Kilowarian la militarian, that hair poster. Shelves filled to the brim with crime novels featuring the supposedly stalwart Vespertine detective Dick Mullen. I want to buy this Dick Mullen novel. Mm, of course. Such violence and immorality. Shelves full of biographies of famous people who have. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance. Oh, let's make our way to Joyce. My police badge, you might be more willing to talk about certain elements. You're back. Good. <coughs> what can I help you with? By the way, I've talked to Everett Clare. You have? And how did you like Mr. Clare? Didn't. Oh, come.
Come on now. He has his uses. How else would he have stayed in power all these years? Or wait, actually. She answered her own question. Corruption. That's how he's done it. Fantastic. Verum like corruption. Reaching into the bowels of the earth. She looks at the ground and nods. The position of my unusual colleague does not reflect official policy. I hope you understand. The RCM does not pick sides. Of course. And I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a corrupt verm myself. However, if you felt like discussing something, how could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be gossiping. Intellectually speaking, it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things. Mr. Everett is helping me find my gun. Oh. That's so helpful of him. All I know about my gun is I believe that's the murder weapon. No, I came after it. Yeah, so it wouldn't be the murder weapon. It would be hilarious if it was, but that's just done. The lieutenant looks at you, and you can swear his jaw muscle is trembling. He's able to contain the anger and surprise. And conventional police officers sometimes lose their guns. They then go around and tell people about this to gauge their reactions. It's all part of detecting. Oh, she could have my gun. A woman did purchase it from the pawn shop. Incredible. Simply incredible. And how is it going? Has this detecting produced a gun? Miss Sarah says it's almost ready to be found soon. Did he now? Well, then it should be any day now. Unless, of course, he's lying to you. Anyway, was there anything else you've heard? Hmm, perhaps he is. I helped him turn up the heat on the borscht. Did you now? What sort of borscht is he making? The cook makes it to keep the strikers drunk. Helps them strike. The strike brew. That's a classic. And by turn up the heat, I presume you mean put more alcohol in it? No, uh, you misunderstand. I turned the knob like this. Beyond curious. I will choose to interpret that as you turning the alcohol in the strike brew down. For the sake of our professional relationship. And because I don't like the idea of them any more drunk than they already are. What else? He asked me to open the door. A referral, you mean? I take it this was for someone in the RCM. Don't answer that. No, I mean like a, a real door to someone's house. Oh my. A real door. The lieutenant does not say anything. But you hear the nylon of his jacket rustle as he looks at you. It had to be done. I got information. It was useful to the case. That's good to hear, Detective. Police work is rarely pretty, but it sounds like you did what you had to do. Her bartering mind cannot fathom that you didn't ask anything in return. Frankly, what was doing was not pretty at all, but... Neither was it illegal, and it was not for nothing. He turns to you. I advise you to be very selective with what information you choose to share. This may have consequences beyond our line of sight. The Union's militant wing organized the lynching. Yes. That's the talk about town. The Hardy Boys, they're called. Find the name rather amusing, honestly. 
Everett says wild pines and mercenaries after the union and now one's dead. The company did not send mercenaries after the union. I told you in great detail about the mistakes my side made. And of course I accept them completely. I just hope you don't share Everard's view on things. After all, as he said, one's dead now. The Pine certainly hasn't killed any of theirs. Let's keep it that way, she means to add, but then doesn't. Everett asked the Union's military wing to fully cooperate with the investigation. How benevolent. Hopefully they'll help you sort this whole business out, if they haven't already. We cannot discuss the specifics of an ongoing investigation, ma'am. Besides, you haven't exactly been forthcoming yourself. That is only fair. I have reason to believe the lynching was a cover-up. Oh my. Very interesting. So the militant wing is protecting one of their own. Her mind races to the conclusion that most benefits her interests. That doesn't mean she's wrong, though. It looks like you may untie this knot yet. Her eyes smile and tingle with her to tingle from Sanya's spine. He didn't seem at all worried about the whole conflict that developing. I wouldn't have taken Everard for a saber rattler. Was he surrounded by Union men he wanted to impress? No. It was more like he wanted things to get worse. In secret, of course. He wasn't trying to impress anyone. I think he wants things to escalate. Or he wants you and me to believe he wants to go to war. There's always that risk, mm. man. But if I may offer my opinion, he means it. Kim's right. I'm pretty sure he meant it. I'll think it over, Detective. Thank you for relaying this information to me. Have I underestimated the Union's ferocity? She has to ask herself by now. That's all I've got to say. What you've said is quite enough. You've given me a lot to consider. And may have helped me prevent this conflict from escalating. And he asked me to deliver an envelope. Sounds like he has you running errands, Detective. A well-established dominance ritual. Mm, to Where did he have you deliver it? To a nameless settlement mm. down the coast nearby. Ah, yes. I've been meaning to go there. She looks over the bay. With longing. Clear and simple longing. Strange. Why does she want to go there? He wants to build a youth centre here for the children of Martinez. A youth centre with Edgar Clare's statue on top of it. Her eyes run across the water. Remorsefully. Go ahead. Help him. Make it so. I have no power to stop him. You're quite fond of this village, aren't you? I should be. In my youth, I had a brief dalliance here in Martinez. He was an older man with impossibly broad shoulders. He's probably dead by now. Even his shack is long gone. That it matters. These buildings are all carbon copies of one another. You've been to Martinez before? Yes. I was slumming it with some girlfriends of mine. We had boats and... Don't hold it against me. My paramour certainly did not. Sounds like you missed those times. Not overly so. It's not like this was the only place we visited. Me and my girlfriends from Azon with our shiny boats. Like reavers. We told ourselves we were the worst thing to happen to the coast since the Coalition landed in 08. Imagine. So you're sad you can't buy the place? Yes. I'm sad I'll never have the time, Detective. I've always wanted a dilapidating fishing village. She is more defensive about it than you. Full of ghosts and ancient memories. Has this errand yielded you any information? 
I'd rather talk about something else for now, if you don't mind. Of course, Detective. Should something come up later down the road, don't be afraid to drop by for a chat. Until then, is there anything I can help you with? Show her your badge. I found my badge, by the way. I love you did. As she inspects the piece of blue plastic, her eyes scanning from left to right. Fast, observantly, like an electronic printer. She is memorizing your badge number. Pleased to meet you, Lieutenant W. Freyter Dubois. I am glad to see a man of high qualification. The situation is precarious. What can I help you with, Lieutenant Yafreta? Seaweed drips on a badge in your hand. It smells of fish. How about you share your information on the lynching, now that you've seen his badge? The goalposts have moved, Lieutenant. In the absence of the badge, I have informed my employer there will be a probe. I cannot rescind that promise. To my knowledge, the drivers are still at the roundabout. I will tell you everything I know when you've finished with them. This was your plan all along? My plan is to share information. The only way to do that now is by telling my employers you've kept your end, which I hope you will, because let me tell you, we are in dire waters. Meaning the information she has will raise the stakes in this game. The sooner the probe is finished, the sooner I can share crucial information with you. Now, is there anything I can do for you in the meanwhile? Tea, perhaps? Do you know something about these tattoos? Show her the photo. That's the man who was killed. I'm afraid this is a discussion for once we've cleared the lynching question. So you know something about the tattoos? Better not tie the force day to the bat's day on this. I hope there is something else I can help you with. I've got some more questions about reality. More lessons in basic reality? My favourite part of the day. Go ahead, ask me anything. Okay, let's give this a try. A strange coldness comes over you. As you look at the world, the waves sway the sloop slowly. That's all. It's on the tip of your tongue, a doubt of sorts already in your head. But it's not fully formed yet. You have to wait and return to this later. Once the jamais vu thought is complete. Thanks all for now. Glad to have been of assistance. The little that I know. Thank Anything you. Else? Thank you. That's all for now. Okay, we came to level up there, so... Oh, here we go. So... You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construct the youth centre. A post there. I don't know where the post box is. I've got two books. Hmm. Let's go and visit Cindy. Cindy, Cindy, Cindy. Graffito says the firing squad squad for the rich. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Do you have any idea what happened to the hangman's armor? What do I care about some fucking tin eggshells? Wait, 
Do you want to know how I knew to ask you? Not particularly. I want to keep this as brief as possible, you see. I want to return to painting the world red. Piss and fuck told me. Fine. I don't care about those wannabe skulls, and I don't care about your armor. She doesn't want to sound surprised at anything you say. Isn't armor art? Art for a body? Oh, all right, Piggy. I'll give you this one. I saw a little girl in the fishing village running around with military grade handwear. Look cute as hell. Get, get you later, Cindy. <laughs> Anything else in here? Check. Heavy fuel oil. Check. Now the only thing left to do is paint the wall. The paintbrush in your hand is like a loaded revolver. What will it be, Desperado? Quite a few things come to mind. Something beautiful is going to happen. You've spoken. The wall will now silently repeat the message for a decade or so until the sea air degrades the paint, adding another layer of detritus to the city. Very poetic. Real poetry. Should we return to our murder investigation? I hear there's a really bad one we are supposed to solve. <laughs> okay, back to the fishing village. Something I wish to buy, which may be of use. The boom boxes wait on the shelves, and your boom box, that gold and amber Harmon Walshi, stares at you longingly with its tape reel eyes. I want to buy that boom box. And here you are. Quality sound reproduction on the go. It'll play anything, wherever. Turn any tape into a conversation of sounds and shapes. Wow. A 
that's a beast. The reel is just what you needed. The reels attached to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is routed behind the magnetic reader. Press play on the tape. You press the large button marked Commencer and the tape starts spinning. There's a small delay before the song starts playing. Keep the portal reel at a harmless distance and wait. Then the organ starts playing a simple melancholic tune echoing in the hallway. A lone singing voice joins in, telling you about the tiniest church in Sessons, surrounded by even tinier yard. You almost feel the seaside mist on your skin. It's mega sad. Within seconds you know this is the one, the real shit you've been looking for. The one you trust your room to. This one tells it like it is. This is your tune. A click, then silence for a bit. Then the tape stops spinning. Could I sing this for karaoke? I think I could sing this. Of course you could sing this. You could take sad to a whole new level with this. And you already know the lyrics since you've listened to it like a million times. Yup, they're all here. All three verses. And the B side of the tape contains the instrumental version it's like the world itself is telling you to do it. Only one obstacle stands on your way. What? Gott, you have to convince Gott to let you sing karaoke in the whirling. After you've won him over, you can express yourself. Let the pain out. Make everyone understand. The lieutenant looks at you as you remove the tape from the boombox. He doesn't say anything. Okay, I'm going to end this recording session here. So, if you watch this, thank you very much, and uh, catch you guys again later. Bye.